What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be back talking about Void Arc and the Galactic Tree. We're going to be going over some things that even I didn't know, uh, some information we found out from data mines, things like that, and some general advice. Again, every time I try to give you some information, I try to make sure it's good. This time I kind of missed a couple big things, so I want to make sure you guys are aware of it. So please make sure you watch this entire one, because I don't want you making the mistakes that even I've made. And that is, is kind of important. So first things first, the galactic tree. So uh, we originally thought that just the chaotic egg had a 100% chance, chance on the first hatch to give you a spirit. Well, looks like it's any pet. So the big play here is making sure you wait till you get a somber pet. Why a somber pet? Well, because that gives you the light, the dark, and the transcendence pets. Uh, I, I, I'm going to switch between pet spirits. It's just stuck in my head that they're still pets, but... Mainly because they give the most stats. They're they're better than even the entangled egg for the most part. Um, these these extra bonuses are more situational, whereas the bonuses you get here, holy damage, all damage dealt especially, and skill damage are going to be useful no matter what the situation you're in, whether you're in PVE, PvP, it doesn't matter. Somber eggs, in my opinion, are the best ones out there to go for the, for the first one. So hopefully you guys haven't hatched, hatched an egg yet. I can't talk. Hopefully none of you guys have actually hatched a somber egg, a chaotic egg, entangled egg. Well, actually, if you hatched a somber egg, you'll be fine. You'll be good. Um, if you have not gotten an egg, just like me, it's four days into the, uh, into the or across four accounts, we're what, two to three days in? About three days in now. I've not gotten a single egg from our maps, so feels bad. Other people already have multiples. I have yet to get one, but if you have not gotten an egg yet and you have not awakened one yet, try to wait for a somber egg. That's going to be the best bang for your buck. And then, of course, start upgrading it. So there's a couple things I want to go over, too. Uh, biggest one in the Void Arc is something even I've made a big mistake of. Do not upgrade any of these. Don't upgrade your collector. Don't upgrade your spaceship lab. Don't upgrade your arcane nexus. Why? Well, I'll throw this screenshot up here. It's something, something I didn't really realize at the very beginning of this, and that is each one of these zones costs some of these resources. So you notice you'll get resources all over the place. You'll be getting these crystal ingots everywhere. These are essentially the resources to upgrade your arc as well as uh as unlock these zones here so you'll notice on the zones here you'll have the one for 3900 51 63 74 and 8600 so each one of these you have to unlock in order so the next one to unlock is the middle one for 3900 well guess what if you did what we did and we upgraded our collector thinking like it's other game modes where it's like no no you want to upgrade your ship immediately uh we done goofed and this first month we're going to be a little bit behind it seems like so Typically, what you want to do is you don't want to upgrade a single thing out of any of these here. Not a single thing. And instead, you want to save 3900 to unlock the second zone. Why? Because that second zone has more resources overall. Well, you're saying, well, that's okay, Barry, because, you know, these we're going to get more Nova Crystals and Crystal Ingot production and stuff from those nodes. Yes, but what happens when you get to the second zone is the data mine info shows that it is a very, very good upgrade going to the second sector as far as general resources generated. So as far as stellar shards, crystals of transcendence, all the pet materials, all those go up. Whereas here, you're only getting the Innova crystals and the crystal ingots. And this only applies to the loads as well. So we're talking about the loads here, these guys here, the void loads. It only applies to the resources generated right here. So... Yep, big mistake for us. Uh, we will finish it. But like in my situation, we're just going to have to do Sector 1 again, which is a little bit of loss of resources. Luckily, though, actually, you know what? Hold on. I don't see any information about XP. I wish I would have had that information before doing this, but I'm not sure how the experience points uh, change. I imagine Sector 2 gives you more experience points. So we'll have to see. 
Another big question I am seeing from a lot of you guys out there is questions about this end. So you'll notice even on mine, it says 90%. We can technically end it. Um, ending it at 90% is possible. What you'll lose is all the resources you are generating right here on all of these nodes. You'll lose out on those and you'll start the map over. The other thing you will lose out on is a bonus 1,000 of these exploration points. I, I believe it's 1,000 exactly. Um, I could be off, but I, I actually, does it say it in here at all? It doesn't say we get, but I think from the data mine info, it's 1,000 extra points. So if you care about the leaderboard, it is something to consider. Um, honestly, this first trip is gonna be a little scuffed for a lot of us because we did upgrade the collector workshop. If you did that because I said something, I really apologize, guys. I mean, I am human. I try to follow up and give you the best information, but I'm not one of those people that deep dives into the, all the data mine info to really math it out. So sadly, we're gonna be probably revisiting sector one here, the dusk sector a second time. Uh, will put us a little bit behind, but not a ton. And another thing that I didn't realize when I first started talking about it is something down the bottom. No, not down the bottom. Where is it? Um, there's something in here that talks about the end of the event. So right here, after an exploration session ends, all facilities on your arc will be reset to level one. So all of these over here, the collector workshop, the spaceship lab, the arcane, arcane nexus, they all get reset back to one every time this exploration ends. So every time we get to that timer, this timer right here is done. We're pretty much resetting our ship back. It's not like um, it's not like Celestial Island where you constantly just keep upgrading your ship and it works on the next one, the next one. Nope, every season it will reset. One other thing I know a lot of people have been asking about are the Central Hall. Um, and what to buy again we've talked about it previously where you definitely need to get the egg in the tier the hundred thousand spent to get to the level two uh shop but there's also a priority that you should have on what you purchase in these shops because certain things are going to be more important to get because there are a limit and that bonus resource is going to help the first thing are going to be these stardust stardust is probably the next priority after eggs that you should focus on purchasing after that, you probably want to focus on Stellar Shards. Um, beyond that, it gets a little bit more of a mix-up. Of course, once you get to the lower tiers, you'll have Core of Transcendence unlocking. That would be the next one to go for. After that is the Void Nars for upgrading uh, in your in your uh, your galactic tree. And then after that, you can kind of wing it. You can get Crystals of Transcendence is probably the next one. And then after that are the Prophet Orbs, the Heroic Scrolls, the Wishing Coins, all those things. It just depends on what you want. Wishing coins are probably the worst one. And then if you do manage to clear everything out, you can get the gold and the spirit. But first things first, you want to try to get, you want to buy this egg. You want to buy both of these out here, both the NARS and the Stardust here. And then buy, I believe, eight Stellar Shards for the time being. That is the exact math to unlock the tier two shop. And once you unlock that tier two shop, it should give you should give you better resource generation. You'll get a chance to get an entangled egg. And again, you want to then prioritize getting that 13 or that uh, 27 or 277, 500 consumption to then unlock the third shop where you can get a somber egg, which the somber eggs, you really want to try to get them immediately. There is another strategy speaking about the somber eggs that you want to make sure you do in the galactic tree it is about a 6% chance to spawn an egg to actually get one of the spirits out of these eggs when you are spawning them, awakening them. On the 15th one, it's a guaranteed. So usually what the strategy is going to be is keeping a somber egg in, in your resources, just holding it on. If you get a second somber egg, don't pop it immediately. What you want to do is use things like the chaotic eggs because chaotic eggs you'll probably get the most of. And if for some reason you don't and you hit the pity timer, if you're at 14 or 15 down here, if you hit that, throw a somber egg in for the 15th to guarantee one of those really good pets. Because like I said, these three pets here are absolutely, absolutely, absolutely crazy good. They're amazing. You don't want to go without them. So hopefully these little tips help you guys out. Again, guys, I apologize. I am human. I do make mistakes. I try to get you guys the best information, but... I will say some of my early information was a little incorrect. 
or I just left it out. So hopefully these things help you out. Again, just remember, even if this month we're off a little bit, we're not gonna optimally do this. This is gonna happen every month. So getting the right strategy for months to come is gonna be very, very important for progress overall, especially if you have the full E5 lineup. Of course, if you're throwing six stars in and all that, you're not missing out on much. I know on my other accounts where I don't have all these E5s, is really not going to influence my progress all that much because really at the end of the day doing this perfectly means one thing and that's the leaderboard if you don't care about the leaderboard just have fun with it hit that smash button if you really don't want to do your daily stuff one thing to note is the ai in here on how they assign people when you smash is not the most optimal but again if you are really just going at this as a i don't care if i'm being optimal i just want to get it done and make sure i do a couple little tips and tricks to make little bits of progress instead of falling too far behind that's what this is for so hopefully you guys enjoy this one again hopefully this helps you guys out apologize for not getting the info to you guys sooner and i'll see you guys next time